So welcome back to the Physics of Music. And today we're going to talk about what I think is the most fundamental concept in music and probably the most fundamental concept in physics. What is it? Well, I think it's time. And so with time, it's something that is obviously very important in our everyday experience. Our experience is basically a set of events, a set of sensations that have a particular ordering to them. If you have any two events, hearing a bird or seeing a flash or feeling something warm with your right hand or tasting lemon, then any two of those events would have an order. Something would happen after, something would happen before, or they could happen at the same time. And even outside of our experience, we believe this is true in our world that we have things happening at various locations and then we can make an ordering of them and some of them are after and some of them are before. Now, we also get quantitative about it and we assign numbers to these various events where the higher number would mean that the event happens after and the lower number would mean the event happens before. And these are the things that we call times. So it's actually interesting to think about how we go about assigning those numbers to our times and how the particular system of time that we've come up with uh, really is defined or was defined originally. So maybe it would be a good place to stop the video for a moment if you like and, and think about that. How can we go from this kind of general concept of time as being a particular ordering of events that happen to this more specific concept where we actually assign particular numbers to events and we can quantify, uh, say, something that happens over a period of time uh, is that longer than something else? Is one song longer than another song? How do we figure that out? So a key concept here is that certain phenomena in, in our world are what we'd call periodic. They're repeating and they repeat over and over again with the same amount of time for each occurrence. So what are some examples of that? Well, maybe the most important kind of fundamental example is the rising and setting of the sun. And so, of course, that has to do with the rotation of the Earth around its axis. That takes almost exactly the same time every time, and we call that amount of time one day. We have other kinds of astronomical events that are periodic. The Earth moving around the Sun, again, takes almost the same amount of time every time, and we call that one year. And so we use these periodic events to be quantitative about our notion of time. We can say this event happened 12 rotations of the earth after another event. And we say that's 12 days after the other event. We can break it down to finer time scales. And the way that we do this is also using periodic events. And so we could build something artificial that has a periodic motion. For example, a pendulum that swings back and forth, which is just a weight on a string or a weight on a rod. This kind of device would have a, would have a, a period or a, the time between repeats would, would be much less than a day. And so that's very useful. For example, we could make something that goes back and forth 3,600 times per hour, and then we could call that amount of time a second, and we could use this device to measure this more, more fine-grained uh, uh, unit of time. Okay. So I've used a couple of words. I used the word period already. Let me just talk about the language that we use for periodic events and how these various words and terms are related to each other. Okay, so as I mentioned, the period is just an amount of time, it's the time between recurrences of our periodic event. Okay. And so the period of the Earth's rotation is one day, 
and the period of the Earth's revolution around the sun is one year. Okay, we also talk about the concept of frequency, and that is the number of times that an event occurs in a specific amount of time. So let me give you an example. Let's say there's a cricket, and the cricket is chirping in a regular periodic way, and the cricket chirps every half of a second. Well, then the period of that chirping, we would say, is half of a second. But another way of describing that periodic event is to say that the cricket chirps twice per second. That's what we would call the frequency. So in this case, the period is 0 0.5 seconds. The frequency is twice per second. In physics, we often write this per second in shorthand notation as seconds to the, to the minus one, or, and, and that indicates that per second is like inverse seconds. Or sometimes you'll see the notation to hertz, and so hertz also is the same thing as inverse seconds, which is the same thing as times per second. So mathematically, if we want to go between period and frequency, then it's just a mathematical inverse relation. So if we're measuring things in seconds or times per second, then we just take the number of seconds per the, for the period, take one over that number, and then that gives you the times per second. Okay. Or similarly, if you have the frequency, then you just take one over that number, and that gives you the period. So just a really quick example, mostly just to make sure that you, you got that bit of notation, the unit of hertz, and this basic idea of going between period and frequency, I want you to think about this question where we have a metronome and it's ticking at three hertz. And so the question is, how many ticks per minute does it make? And then the second part of the question is, what is the period of that metronome in seconds? Okay, so pause the video if you want, work it out, but I'm gonna talk about how to do that now. And so the first thing to remember is that hertz is a unit that just means inverse seconds. Okay, and so the metronome ticking at three hertz means that the frequency is three inverse seconds or three ticks per second. The question asks how many ticks per minute does it make? And so we just have to convert between seconds and minutes. We remember that there are 60 seconds in a minute. And since the metronome ticks three times per second, then the number of ticks per minute is going to be three times 60 or 180. 180, there it is, ticks per minute. What about the period of the metronome? And so remember, if we want to go from the frequency, which is three per second, to the period, we just have to take the mathematical inverse. And so the period is one over the frequency, which is going to be one over three, and the units are seconds. So the period is one third of a second. So let's talk about, mu uh, about time and events in the, con in the context of music. And so mu time is very, very fundamental to music. And in fact, a piece of music can be understood as a series of musical events happening at particular times. So there's a drum beat, there's a clarinet starting up that plays a particular note, there's a violin note, and sometimes these things happen at the same time. And so the entire piece of music is basically just the sequence of these events, at least abstractly. The rhythm, that's one of the fundamental concepts in music, we could say that is just the pattern of when these events occur in time. Okay. And so that could be that could be regular in certain parts of a piece of music, or it could be more erratic. Okay. But the idea of periodic events, events that repeat with a regular period, is really crucial 
in various aspects of music. Okay, so periodic events, I would say, are a key feature that distinguishes musical sound from just ordinary sound. So let me give an example. So if we, let's just go to me here. And so what I have is just a drum here. Um, so if I want to talk about a periodic event with this, with this drum, uh, that could be as simple as my drumstick hitting the rim of the drum. And so that would be just one event but now I could make it into a periodic event if I just wait a certain amount of time and then that happens again. So hit the drum. There we go. So now we have a periodic event. And so it's starting to sound like music. It's, it's a little bit boring. I'm not sure if everyone would call that music. But we can also consider uh, slightly more interesting uh, periodic events. So say I'll play a series of, of three, uh, a th a three beats with the, the drumstick on, on the drum, and then I'll just repeat that. So for example, okay, so that's starting to sound even, even more musical. Um, so it wasn't just a single repeated event. It was a set of three events, a set of three hits of the drum, and then repeated, and then repeated, and then repeated, and then repeated. Okay. And then I could layer periodic events on top of each other. And so if I do those two things at the same time, Okay, so that is, that is starting to sound like uh, some, some actual music. Uh, maybe you, you would start to even call it when we have many of these periodic events happening at the same time with, say, different instruments. Uh, sometimes we call that a groove. And so uh, one thing that you can do at this point, I, what, which I would recommend, is just think of one of your favorite pieces of music and go and listen to it, but listen to it from the perspective of periodic events. Uh, think about, you know, what are you hearing and are there things repeating there either in, in the rhythm or in the melody or in the, in the larger structure of the piece. Uh, if you want one particular example, go and listen to the beginning of Stevie Wonder's Superstition. And it's a really interesting example where you can hear various periodic events being layered on top of each other. Uh, for this wonderful musical sound at the beginning of the song. Okay, and then you can tune in for the next video.